There's almost no escaping the deluge of information about the new coronavirus. We're both confused and riveted, trying to work out what's real and important and what's not. And COVID-19 is acting as an accelerant to conspiracy theories. The digital era we live in is blended with an analog virus, a contagion that lingers on surfaces, waiting for a human host where it can replicate. Fear of this virus is powerful, and it's intensified all kinds of nefarious misinformation and disinformation that's spreading online. The result is an explosive force that could have catastrophic consequences. You cannot make people wear a mask. It's not our laws at all. This is just made up by Bill Gates and them. It is 2020, but at times, it feels like we flash back to medieval times. Fear of an invisible enemy is everywhere, and it's making some people do crazy things. Look it up for yourself. Go online and look it up. Before coronavirus, we feared technology would overtake us, undermine us, create a world where we can't tell what's real and what's fake. President Trump is a total and complete dip. This deep fake video, for example, was made using machine learning. Moving forward, we need to be more vigilant with what we trust from the internet. That's a time when we need to rely on trusted news sources. Today, it's not deep fakes and sophisticated technology that's insidious and destabilizing. It's a virus. An invisible enemy has swept across the world so fast and killed so many, even modern hospitals with the best technology have been overwhelmed. COVID-19 is moving faster than we can and has outsmarted our best scientists. We still have no effective weapon against it. That has sown fear and uncertainty, disinformation, misinformation going viral. Many there are spouting the same conspiracy theories that we hear in the United States. Gaining traction all over the world. There's a lot of psychological research behind why people find the simplicity of conspiratorial narratives appealing. Rene Duresta studies how disinformation spreads online. It's the idea that someone somewhere is, is uh, maliciously pulling the strings, right? So the world is not out of your control if someone somewhere is deliberately doing these things to hurt you. Then there's a villain, then there's someone you can direct your anger at. There's a fire hose of false information, memes and hashtags spewed at us from multiple platforms, shared millions of times. Hold up, wait a minute, it's a chopper. And fiction morphs into what some mistakenly believe is fact. Conspiracies that lived online have now burst out into the real world. I think Americans need to realize their freedoms are being taken away. And if they don't stand up for them right now, there won't be any freedom to stand up for. Online conspiracists have cobbled together a narrative, not grounded in any fact, that accuses powerful people like Bill Gates of releasing the virus as a ploy to launch a genocidal mass vaccination campaign. For decades, Gates has been working on depopulation and dictatorial control plans on global politics. This Italian MP even gave a long speech in Parliament about it, calling Bill Gates a vaccine criminal. The real goal of all of this is total control. The spread of such outlandish charges may seem silly, but the consequences could be catastrophic. If large portions of the public believe the intent of Gates and public health experts is nefarious, they could be convinced a coronavirus vaccine, if one is discovered, will be dangerous. Many may refuse it. There's evidence that's already starting. A poll in the U.S. found half of all Americans who name Fox News as their primary TV news source believe Bill Gates is plotting to use a COVID-19 vaccination campaign to implant microchips in billions of people to track their movements. 44% of voters who cast ballots for Donald Trump in 2016 believe it too, even though neither Fox nor Trump has promoted that theory. And a Canadian poll for the School of Journalism at Carleton University found nearly half of Canadians believed at least one of four conspiracy theories. 26% believed COVID-19 was engineered as a bioweapon in a Chinese lab and released into the general population. And then there's pandemic. For exposing their deadly secrets, the minions of Big Pharma waged war on Dr. Michael Hitz. It looks like a slick documentary and is like gospel for believers. Dr. Mikovits is naming names of those behind the plague of corruption that places all human life in danger. 
The former research scientist who features in it makes lots of claims, not backed up by evidence, including that wearing a mask is dangerous because it activates your own virus. She was discredited in 2011, after the journal Science retracted her paper on a supposed link between a virus and chronic fatigue syndrome. Her fall from grace was steep. She was arrested for a period of time, I think, for stealing lab equipment. Uh, so this was sort of a disreputable figure who had really become kind of a fringe conference speaker since her paper was retracted. Uh, but at this particular point in time, she had a, a, a new book out and uh, claimed that her paper was retracted and other, you know, other things had happened to her that were bad in her career because of Anthony Fauci, who has risen to a position of prominence in the United States in our government's response to COVID. On May 4th, Plandemic was posted to Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo. It spread unchecked, and in just over a week, was shared, linked, viewed, and commented on more than 8 million times. 2 million on Facebook alone. There's a lot of overlap in conspiratorial communities online. There's a research that shows that if you believe in one conspiracy theory, you're likely to believe in others. So in the case of Plandemic, what you started to see was the QAnon community picked it up. And this is a conspiratorial community uh, in the United States. And the QAnon community has a lot of overlap with what we can call the kind of um, more mainstream pro-Trump, pro-President Trump community. Uh, the MAGA community, if you will, Make America Great Again. On May 11th, YouTube, Facebook, and Vimeo took the video down, and fact-checkers have worked to debunk it. But it lives on and keeps being shared. Facts aren't as sexy as a conspiracy. When you're sharing something that's being billed as, here is the secret dark truth of the way of the world, that's much more interesting and compelling and more likely to get someone to click. You have to create content that's emotionally resonant. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Zubin Damanya, aka... Actual medical experts, like this Stanford-trained doctor, are pushing back with their own online videos. I can't believe I'm wasting my time doing this, but I just want to stop getting messages about it. Because it's really frustrating to think that people are this freaking stupid. This one, debunking Plandemic, has been viewed on YouTube more than 3 million times. You should look at the credibility of the people who are trying to convince you that they're right when they don't have any science to prove it. The UN is working to counter the conspiracies, too. And we're partnering with a also a an organization called First Draft News that is closely monitoring the spreading of misinformation, where it's coming from. Um, and we will prioritize audiences that are receiving this uh, misinformation and sharing it as well. It's hoping to mobilize millions of digital first responders to counter misinformation. <laughs> Blaming 5G cell towers for spreading the disease has led to arson attacks in Quebec and around the world. Accusations China manufactured the virus have led to racist insults and assaults. And Bill Gates, who five years ago warned the biggest potential killer the world faced is not war, but a pandemic, and who has spent billions on life-saving vaccines, is now public enemy number one to conspiracy theorists, who are infecting millions with misinformation that could be as dangerous as the virus itself. Where does this leave the news consumer? Well, with me is Craig Silverman. He's media editor of BuzzFeed. He's an award-winning author and journalist and one of the world's leading experts on online misinformation. He started using the term fake news back in 2014, long before President Trump weaponized it. Craig, you have edited a verification handbook on media manipulation. And in it, you make the point that everything in the digital world can be gamed and manipulated. And there are a variety of people and entities with incentives to do it. Now that that world has met this real world virus, what has it led to? I feel like it's a high watermark in terms of conspiracy theories, misinformation, disinformation, just a wide range of, you know, very confusing, often misleading information polluting our environment. And we've sort of been leading up to this point to a certain extent. Things have progressively kind of been getting a little bit worse and worse. But you have a massive global event like a pandemic, which naturally unleashes conspiracy theories. You do that in this digital environment. And this is what we're experiencing right now, a really high watermark with in terms of this false and misleading info. 
What's the onus on social media platforms who all profit from this junk to refuse to let it live on their sites? We've seen Twitter fact check President Trump's tweets for the first time, not, not about coronavirus actually, but, but mail-in ballots. Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg though says it's not up to platforms to be truth police. What is your view? Well, they absolutely have responsibility here. And, and they have acknowledged that responsibility. If we think about how things have changed since the end of 2016, they were doing very little to almost nothing to combat false and dangerous claims on their platform. And now pretty much every major platform has teams that are dedicated to reviewing this information. Facebook funds dozens of fact checkers around the world. So it's kind of a strange thing when Mark Zuckerberg comes out and says, well, it's not up to us to be the arbiters of truth. They also talk out of the other side of their mouth, saying how much they've invested in the kind of efforts to rid their platform of dangerous and misleading and false information. So when he says he doesn't want to be, doesn't think they should be truth police, you think that specifically relates to politicians? Yes. I mean, that's the only sort of interpretation of that comment that could make it partially true, because they absolutely are uh, helping arbitrate and decide on the veracity of content. Now, they've outsourced that to a certain extent to third-party fact-checkers, but Facebook has introduced the program. It's mm -hmm. spending millions and millions of dollars a year on people who are whose job description is absolutely falling into the arbiters of truth level. Um, and Facebook has decided that they don't want fact-checkers fact-checking political ads, and they don't want them fact-checking political speech. And that in itself is a pretty controversial line to draw. Let's talk about the pandemic video. It was taken down from a number of sites, but you know it keeps popping up and it's being shared uh, anyway. Is there a way that that can actually be stopped or is the online ecosystem just too big, too ungovernable that, that it's never going to happen? I think it is a really good example of perhaps what we can expect from these platforms, at least at this moment in time. And the reality is that they are too big for them to actually be able to enforce them completely. And so something like the pandemic really exploits that because they know that, sure, maybe at some point it gets fact checked and it starts to be flagged for removal by Facebook itself. But they know that they can get it uploaded by other people. In fact, the filmmaker, uh, when he released it, he said, listen, everyone go download the film because we know it's going to get removed and we want you to re-upload it elsewhere. So it was really part of their marketing campaign, you could say. Craig, there's misinformation, which is spreading wrong information, and disinformation, which is deliberately spreading wrong information designed to deceive. What do we know about who is doing this when it comes to COVID-19? Is it individuals or state actors or, or both? We've got a wide range of different actors with different motivations. And so you talked about misinformation. It's an important distinction. I think there are a lot of very well-meaning people who are uncertain, who are looking for guidance and help around navigating this novel coronavirus, and they will at times unintentionally spread false and misleading information. So there is a lot of that happening. And then you have the sort of deliberate bad actors. And frankly, they factor in those well-meaning people. They try to design their disinformation so it appeals to the beliefs, to the biases, to the fears of all of us, um, which might cause us to not only consume it, but to then reshare it. And in terms of those bad actors, with the coronavirus, we're certainly seeing a lot of kind of existing alternative uh, health influencers, people who've already staked out their turf, whether it's anti-vaccine activists or people like that, who are really seizing this as their moment to spread their particular message. There is state involvement. In particular, if you look right now, there's a huge propaganda war being waged between the U.S. and China over the origins of the virus and blame for it, and there are other state actors involved as well. But I also think we have to be aware that a lot of people are thinking that a vaccine is going to be the moment when all of this starts to recede, but that's actually gonna be the moment when very organized health disinformation communities like anti-vaccine activists are gonna be moving to the next level of their campaign to try and create doubt and fear around a vaccine. Do you think that conspiracy theories around that and COVID-19 generally could become as dangerous as the virus itself? I think it actually it could potentially be even worse uh, in the sense that if you actually create hesitancy among the population to take a vaccine that has gone through the proper procedures and been tested, just like you know, so many of the vaccines we all get as a regular part of our life and vaccines that have saved hundreds of millions, maybe even billions of lives around the world over time, and these last few months have been high watermarks for disinformation and misinformation, 
I'm very worried about um, the groundwork being laid to really cast doubt about vaccines and which could cause potentially more death and more suffering. Still ahead, restriction roulette. The best way to solve the economic crisis is to solve the public health crisis. The truth and consequences of opening up too soon. Plus, a May Day for malls? Well, I don't think that they're going to be irrelevant, but I definitely think that they're going to be changing. The new reality for shopping centres and the people who work there. And up next... It was a total whim. From chickens to puppies, the animals filling our pandemic void.